Hi, my name is Sam. I'm going to talk to you about extending MXNet for new features and performance together with Serge. This is going to be a, a two-part talk. I'm going to start, and Serge is going to take over about halfway through. We're going to talk about extending MXNet, adding new functionality, new features, things like custom operators, graph passes, optimizations, things that you want to dynamically load into MXNet at runtime to um, extend it with new functionality. And then Serge is going to take over and give you an example using some of these features uh, with TensorRT and show how he has been able to take models and partition them and leverage TensorRT for acceleration. OK, so first, an overview of MXNet extensions. Uh, MXNet extensions is kind of a, a set of APIs both on the front end for deep learning users and APIs on the back end for framework developers to build and distribute components uh, without having to rebuild MXNet from source. So kind of an overview, you can create a library, you can put custom components in it, you can build it separately from MXNet, and then you can dynamically load it into MXNet at runtime. And you can do this using only two files from the MXNet code base, the libapi.h and libapi.cc that are self-contained. They don't need any other files from the MXNet code base. And you don't need to build MXNet from source when building your custom library. Here's an example build command. You can see here we're using a custom library with functionality in mylib.cc. You can see here we compile that with the libapi.cc file, and we include the uh, MXNet include directory in order to get libapi.h. You don't have to include the whole directory. You just need to somehow make the libapi.h file available during your build. And you build a shared object, and then now you have your custom library. Simple as that. Then to load your custom library into MXNet at runtime, uh, there's a few different APIs. Here's an example in Python where you pass in just the path on disk to your library, and MXNet loads it, finds the custom components in it, and then makes it available. MXNet extensions has been available since the 1.7 release. This is a project that we started back at the beginning of 2019, um, and where we're still actively adding new features all the time. There's a link on the bottom to some examples on GitHub. You can go take a look. Uh, this one's just kind of building a small little library to help get you started. Next, we'll talk a little bit about how you can add custom operators. Operators in MXNet come in a few different categories. Um, first, we'll talk about stateless operators, where you have um, a function, uh, an operator that just takes inputs and produces outputs. It doesn't need to maintain any state in between forward calls or between a forward and a backward call. You can implement a few different functions to define how shapes are inferred for your operator in MXNet, um, and then implement the forward function to say what your compute will do for your operator, and optionally implement the backward function if your operator is going to participate in training. You can do this for both CPU and GPU operators, and you can override built-in operators too. This has some caveats that I'll skip over for today, but things like your operator needs to be registered in the same way as the MXNet built-in operators. The other category of custom operators in MXNet are stateful operators. So it's kind of the same as the stateless, except it gives you the ability to maintain some state either between multiple forward calls or between the forward call and the backward call. You can do things like batch norm, where you want to compute a running average between each forward call. And then the next category of operators I want to talk about are subgraph operators. These are, we're kind of building here. These are similar to the stateful operators, but they can also have a subgraph. So what's a subgraph? Well, that's just a portion of an MXNet model where you have some operators and data dependencies between them. You can think about this as being an operator for control flow. Maybe you have a conditional if else or a loop. Or maybe you have a sequence of operators that you want to execute outside of MXNet, uh, maybe by taking advantage of some other library that's optimized for deep learning like MKLDNN or TensorRT. 
And there's some examples here in the lib custom op directory up on GitHub. So take a look at that if you want to see more. For this particular one, we have a nice write-up with a readme and some examples and tutorials, so you can just get started really easy. So the next custom extensions feature I want to talk about is partitioners. This is a functionality that lets you uh, write a way to take an MXNet model and insert subgraphs for your optimizations. MXNet has a built-in partitioning feature that let, lets you control how uh, you include operators in your subgraph. There's lots of ways to do this. You can do something simple, just like coloring all the ops. Maybe you want all the convolution operators, or you can implement something more sophisticated where you implement this selector class that looks at data dependencies and chooses which operators to include. It also has the ability to review each of the candidate subgraphs that MXNet comes up with and choose to accept or reject them uh, as you see fit. If you reject a subgraph, those operators just go back to running in MXNet. So that's kind of the back end, how you would write a partitioner. And on the front end, your users would take your library and they would use APIs like shown here for the different MXNet APIs to partition their model. So if your user is using symbol or module APIs, you just call this optimize for API on the symbol object, give the name of your custom backend, and then any options that you provide for your users to customize your partitioning. And similarly for, for Gluon. And then there's some examples up on GitHub if you want to go take a look at those. So the next feature is the custom graph passes. If you think about partitioners and subgraphs as more of a restrictive kind of optimization where you're just grouping um, operators in the model and doing some optimization there, think about graph passes as more of a free form optimization. You can really do whatever you want to optimize a model. You can come in and combine multiple operators together and insert a single operator in replacement. You can go in and do pre-computing, kind of a constant propagation, if you will, where you execute operators on constant data so that you don't need to recompute it for each forward call at runtime. You can do things like um, split weights or combine weights. Um, basically, we give you the whole model architecture graph and all the weights and let you um, go crazy. There's an example of custom graph passes in Moises's talk where he presents a custom graph pass to accelerate BERT. So take a look at that if you're interested in seeing some real world results. And if you want to try it out, of course, we have examples up on GitHub. And finally, I want to give you a little sneak peek about some things that we're working on. Um, we talked about operators and graph passes, but I want to tell you about how we're leveraging this dynamic library loading functionality in MXNet to kind of make MXNet better by modularizing the different parts of MXNet. We're looking at ways to either simplify the MXNet build by building different components separately and then loading them together at runtime or making it easier for users to get the specific configuration of MXNet that they want. Maybe distribute some core portion of MXNet and then as users decide they want to do something more uh, specific, like run on a GPU, help them download the specific parts of MXNet, specific, uh, particularly for GPUs. So if you want to get an idea about what we're doing there, you can take a look at the example for lib external ops. And it would be great to have you come and help out with this project. All right, so at this point, I'm going to hand it over to Serge, and he'll give you an example of using TensorRT. Now we are going to see how we leverage the new partition API to integrate the NVIDIA inference engine TensorRT. But first, what's TensorRT? So it's a library that takes trained models, optimize them, and run them on its own inference engine. It supports most of the operators used in deep learning. 
and it speeds up the inference with different techniques, both static and dynamic, as layer fusion, kernel auto-tuning, multi-stream execution, and more. First, we added a TensorRT op to MXNet that embeds a full-blown TensorRT engine. During its creation, this op takes a MXNet graph and converts it to a TensorRT engine. We want then to replace some parts of our MXNet model with those TensorRT ops. If all the operators are supported by TensorRT, it will end up replacing the full MXNet graph with a single TensorRT op. To do so, we need three things. First, to identify the subgraphs that are compatible with TensorRT. Then, we need to create equivalent TensorRT ops engines with the layers and parameters from the subgraphs. And at the end, we want to replace the subgraphs in the models by these TensorRT ops. And this, as one can expect, is perfect for the partition API. What we want to achieve may be clearer when illustrated. Let's say we have this graph where the subgraph is composed of the ops 3, 4, 5, and 6 are all supported by TensorRT. In the end, we want to replace it by a single TensorRT op that embeds the subgraph with the op 3, 4, 5, and 6. And we end up with the MXNet graph that looks like what we can see on the right. All the steps that are required are already built in the partition API. We have the subgraph selector to select and filter the operators and subgraphs that will be compatible with TensorRT. We have the subgraph property create subgraph node function that we can use to create the new TensorRT op. And in the end, when we want to replace these subgraphs by the TensorRT ops, we can use the function connect subgraph inputs and connect subgraph outputs. Additionally, we can use the prepartition to uh, parse the arguments and prepare the parameters. So for the front end, we just call optimize for on the model with the TensorRT backend, the uh, input, and uh, some optional backend parameters. As we can see here, we can use the precision parameter for the TensorRT backend to turn on the FP16 mode in TensorRT. Finally, let's check the performance improvement for the inference. We run the TensorRT backend optimization on uh, computer vision models from the Gluon CV model zoo. And we looked at the relative performance of MXNet TensorRT against the default MXNet. We can see ResNet50 has the biggest improvement. That's because all the operators in ResNet50 are compatible with TensorRT and we end up with a single TensorRT op that replaces the whole graph. For other models as SSD, YOLO and faster CNN, they might be not fully representable in TensorRT, but still they have a lot of subgraphs that are compatible and then replaced by TensorRT engines. And we can still see some clear improvement here. And that concludes the MXNet TensorRT presentation.